Right, here I have a pair of simultaneous equations. There they are, and we're asked to solve them. Now, let's just have a look at these. Look, I've got uh, quadratics in that one. In fact, you probably recognize this as a circle, x squared plus y squared equals 25, and a straight line. Either way, it's quadratic simultaneous equations, or nonlinear, and we're going to use what I call the substitution method, where we uh, rearrange one of the equations to y equals and substitute it into the other one. So let's start by labeling my equations. There we go, uh, a and b. And I'm going to take equation b and rearrange that slightly. So I'm going to get y minus 3x equals 13. That's what they told me. And if I add 3x to both sides, I get y equals 3x write that properly, 3x plus 13. And that's now in a position where I can substitute that back into this first equation. Wherever I see a y, I simply put 3x plus 13. So let's try that. Write down what we're doing so that the examiner can see that we're doing the right thing. So substitute that back into a, and I get x squared plus y squared. But remember that y is 3x plus 13. And that's equal to 25. Okay. Now I just need to solve that equation. Sounds easy enough. Let's write it out again, but with 3x plus 13 as squared as two brackets. There we go. Um, 3x plus 13 times 3x plus 13 uh, as two brackets. And multiply that out. How do I multiply out? two brackets like that? Well, my favorite method is something called FOIL, which I hope you've come across before. There are other ways of doing this, but this is how I like to do it. FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last, and we take eat the pairs in the brackets in that order. So we do the first pair in the bracket, so the first one in each bracket, 3x times 3x is 9x squared. The outer pair is 3x times 13, Three thirteens are 39. I hope you can do that in your head. If you can't, just write it down at the side. Take the inner pair. 13 times 3 is also 39 with an X. And the last pair, the last one in each bracket, 13 times 13. How are we going to do 13 times 13? Well, let's do 10 times 13, and that's uh, 130. And then 3 times 13, which we've done a couple of times already, is 39. And let's add those together to get 13 times 13, which is therefore 169. I hope you might know that from the square numbers, but if you don't, then we've just done it like that. Okay, let's simplify this a little bit if we can. How many x squareds have we got? Well, we've got x squared plus 9x squared, which is 10x squared. 39x plus 39x is 78x. Okay, you could have done 40 plus 40 and taken two off, so that's 78x. And then actually, because I know I, this is a quadratic equation, I want all the terms on one side and an equals zero. I'm going to subtract the 25 from both sides to get equals zero on the right. And to get, well, 169, take away 25 is 144. And I have to solve this quadratic equation. Now, how am I going to do that? It's quite a nasty looking one. Uh, but look, these numbers are all even. So I can divide by 2. And if you can do that, uh, do. That only works in an equation, of course, um, because you've got to be able to divide the right hand side by 2 as well. So, divide by 2 and I get 5x squared plus 39x plus half of 144 is 72. And a half of 0 on the right is still 0. Okay, that's still quite a nasty quadratic equation. So, brace yourselves, because we're going to have to solve this by factorization. How do I know I can factorize it? Because... It's a non-calculated question, and also there's no degree of accuracy given when it says solve the simultaneous equations. If there's a degree of accuracy, it's a formula question. But this does factorize. 
Okay, hold on to your hats, because this is quite a nasty one. So here we go. Um, when you've got a number in front of the x squared that isn't 1, you always take those two numbers and you multiply them together. Okay, so we multiply those together and we get 572s. Now, how am I going to do 572s? Well, I'm going to do 1072s. Uh, and divide by 2. So 1072s is uh, 720. So 572s is half of that, which is 360. So our simple task is to find two numbers which multiply together to give 360 and add together to give 39. Sounds easy enough. Uh, all the numbers are going to be positive because both the signs are positive, so that's at least a bonus. Now, let's try this. Okay, I'm just going to be very methodical here and start with 1. 1 times 360. Ah, that definitely doesn't add up to 39. So let's try 2 times, well, I've got a half the 360, so that's 180. Still doesn't work. 3 times what? Well, 3 into 360, 3 into 36 is 12 with the 0. Okay, that still doesn't add up to 39. Let's keep going. What about 4 into 360? Well, how can I do that easily? Well, if I'm doubling the 2 from the line I've just highlighted, I can halve the 180 to get 90. So those add together to give 94. Still doesn't work. So what about 5? Five? 5 times what is 360? Well, actually, look, just above, we've already done that. 5 times 72 is 360. So, that still doesn't add together to give 39, though. This is taking a while, but never mind. So, what about 6? takes even longer when I keep using the wrong pen. So, 6 times, well, 6, 6 is a 36, so that's 6 times 60. 7 does not go into 360, but 8 does. And again, using what we've done before, 4 times 90 is 360. So, double the 4 to get 8. We halve the 90 to get uh, 45. Uh, there it is. And what about 9 into 360? Well, 9 into 36 goes 4 times, so it's 9 times 40. And 9 plus 40 is 49, not 39. So we need to keep going. Right, what about 10 times something? 10 times 36 is 360. Still doesn't add up to 39. 11 does not go into 360, but 12 does. 12 threes are 36, so 12 times 30 is 360. But still, we're not there. And 15 is the next thing we need to try. Well, 15 times what is 360? Uh, how can we get to that easily? Well, if you look at uh, 5 times 72. I've multiplied the 5 by 3 to get 15, so I divide the 72 by 3 to get 24, and 15, ah, 15 plus 24 is 39. So there is finally the right one. Okay, that's as long as it's ever taken to find the numbers, but never mind, we've got there. And now how do we put those into uh, our quadratic. Well, if you've seen me doing this before, you'll know that I cheat slightly. Okay, and I cheat like this. What I do is I put the 5 that's in front of the x squares at the front of the x squared at the front of both brackets, which is clearly wrong. Okay, that is not the right thing to do. Okay, I'm not uh, doing the right thing, but it doesn't matter because it will all come right in the end. Then I put my numbers in, and I put the plus 15 and the plus 24 in there, and then I uncheat. Okay, so I now get back on track by cancelling anything I can in the brackets. Okay, so if there's a common factor, I simply cancel it. And there is one in the first bracket, there's a common factor of 5, and that cancels down to 1 and 3. 5 and 15 cancel to 1 and 3. There's nothing I can cancel in the second bracket, and so I'm done. And now I'm back on track. So, factorising 5x squared plus 39x plus 72, I get uh, x plus 3 in the first bracket there, and 5x plus 24 in the second bracket, and that is equal to 0. Notice 
I didn't uh, continue this line as an equation because I don't want anyone to accuse me of doing something incorrect. Cheating, yes. Wrong, no. So what does that give me? Uh, how can I find numbers which make one of these brackets equal to zero? Well, either x plus 3 equals zero, and so x equals minus 3, or, uh, well, how do I make 5x plus 24 equal to zero? Let's do it over at the side here. That's a little equation to solve. And so let's subtract 24 from both sides. And we get uh, 5x equals minus 24. And dividing by the 5 gives me what I need, which is x equals. So x equals minus 24 over 5. That was fun. So uh, there we go. Those are my two values of x, finally. Except, of course, we've got to find the y values as well. So although we've done half the question and found these x values, how do we find the y values? We just stick them back into where it says y equals. So that uh, form of equation B. So let's do that. Uh, let's tell, us, tell everybody what we're doing. So we're going to stick those into equation B. There we go. And we put y equals 3 in, and we get, sorry, y, uh, x equals minus 3. Hello? x equals minus 3, so y equals 3 times minus 3 plus 13, or y equals 3 times minus 24 over 5 plus 13. I'm running out of space there. Um, and working that out, I get y equals, okay, here we go, 3 times minus 3 is minus 9, plus 13 is, of course, 4. So x equals minus 3, y equals 4, or, and it's this bit I'm working out now. Oh, crikey, how am I going to do that? So, uh, 3 times minus 24 is... Why am I doing that? Because I'm multiplying the tops. 3 times 24 is, well, 72. We've come across that already. That's minus 72 over 5 plus, well, what's 13 as something over 5? Uh, well, that would be 5 13s are 65. Okay, you can get to that in a number of ways. I'll leave that one to you. So I've got minus 72 over 5 plus 65 over 5, and that's those two bits there and we add them together, and minus 72 plus 65 is minus 7 over 5. And there are my two values of y. Now you might want to write out uh, these numbers again, the two values of x and the two values of y, but actually I'm just going to leave them as they are. Now I've got to say at this point, that is as hard a pair of simultaneous equations without a calculator as I have ever seen. And so, if you've got this far, or you think you can get this far on your own, very, very well done indeed.